Acceptable and unacceptable forms of ID. It is understood that establishments should always check for identification, but which forms of ID can you accept to verify a customer's age? In fact, the answer to that question may vary from state to state, or even from establishment to establishment. Fortunately, there are some forms of ID that are almost universally accepted. These acceptable forms of ID include a valid state-issued driver's license, a valid state-issued identification card, a valid United States passport, a valid military identification card. These forms of ID share the following features. The name of the government agency issuing the ID, the name and signature of the cardholder, the date of birth of the cardholder, a physical description of the cardholder, a photograph of the cardholder, a valid, unexpired date. Unacceptable or insufficient forms of ID. Once you go beyond the four forms of ID listed above, uncertainty can kick in. Just keep in mind that few, if any, alternative forms of ID will meet the strict standards of what constitutes an acceptable ID. Some forms of ID don't list a date of birth. Others don't include a person's photo and can thus be easily transferred amongst friends. You may want to check with your local liquor authorities for more information on acceptable forms of ID. In Pennsylvania, the State Liquor Authority has provided helpful information regarding what type of ID shouldn't be accepted in state. These unacceptable forms of ID include college ID, birth certificate, voter registration card, social security card, library card. California also provides information on what type of ID shouldn't be accepted. These unacceptable forms of ID include temporary driver's license, non-photo driver's license, work ID card. Penalties associated with fake IDs. Any individual who is associated with the use of a fake ID is taking a huge risk. Fines, jail time, community service, and suspended driving privileges are all penalties associated with trying to pass off a fake ID. The reality is that using a fake ID to get alcohol is like playing with fire. Ultimately, you will get burned. On the West Coast, a minor in Washington State will face up to a $1,000 fine and 90 days in jail for possessing an ID that does not rightfully belong to a minor. An additional sentence for community service is also possible. Washington Revised Code 66.20.200. On the East Coast, Virginia is no less strict. For anyone found guilty of trying to purchase alcohol with a fake ID, the state mandates a minimum $500 fine or 50 hours of community service, in addition to six months to a year of suspended driving privileges. There's no escaping the fact. Any association with a fake ID has lasting implications. The fines and jail time penalties that one can face for this form of deceit are in and of themselves severe. But beyond that, having a fake ID incident associated with one's record chips away at his or her credibility and trustworthiness. An individual's future career and academic prospects can be jeopardized as a result. It is in nobody's interest to get involved with a fake or borrowed ID. Preventing Intoxication Objective By the end of this unit, you should 1. Recognize the effects of intoxication and the impact of alcohol poisoning. 2. Understand how to serve responsibly in order to prevent intoxication and comprehend the concept of drink counting. By now, we clearly know that it is our duty not to serve to intoxicated customers. For example, those who drink beyond the rate at which their bodies can healthily process alcohol. But since everybody reacts differently to the consumption of alcohol, how exactly do we go about identifying who is intoxicated and who isn't? The key is to look for and identify some basic signs of visible intoxication. Signs of intoxication include aggressive behavior, drowsiness, delayed reactions, excessive friendliness, rambling and other speech problems, obnoxious or inappropriate behavior, smell of alcohol, flushed face with bloodshot eyes. Beyond intoxication, there is also the possibility that a customer will suffer from alcohol poisoning after having too much drink. Symptoms of alcohol poisoning include 
mental confusion, passing out, vomiting, seizures, slow irregular breathing, low body temperature, flushed skin and paleness, seizures, comas, permanent brain damage, or even death may result from alcohol poisoning. Be sure to contact your manager and the proper authorities if you suspect that a customer is suffering from alcohol poisoning. Staying clear of intoxication. Don't let things get carried away. Take appropriate measures to ensure that, through your service, you are not causing or extending a customer's intoxication. A. Responsible Serving Practices Whether you are a new server or a longtime manager, you should never forget that you have a role to play in preventing intoxication. Always make sure to follow house policies concerning responsible serving practices. Recent research findings point toward a number of different techniques that you can implement to further your objective of serving responsibly. They include serving alcohol in standard sizes, limiting sales of pitchers, cutting off service to intoxicated customers, promoting alcohol-free beverages, encouraging food consumption, eliminating last call for drinks announcements. B. Limiting promotions. Several states have passed laws that bar your establishment from sponsoring excessive or unreasonable drink promotions. Even where these promotions remain legal, it makes sense to adopt house policies that will limit your advertisements to sensible levels. Among these controversial promotional practices that may be advantageous to limit are free beverages, the service of free drinks to customers, prizes, the act of awarding alcoholic beverages as prizes, reduced price, a change in price for a predetermined day or time, additional servings, the practice of serving customers who have yet to finish their original drinks, unlimited beverages, the opportunity for customers to order unlimited drinks for a fixed period of time after paying a fee. Increased volume, the practice of boosting volume in alcoholic beverages without also boosting prices. C. Traffic light system. One interesting approach to alcohol sales is to adopt the mindset that your customers are operating in terms of a traffic light system. Green, your basic customer will come in and unwind with a nice drink smile and serve them politely. Yellow. Some customers will require more careful observation. They might drink to the point where they become more talkative or outgoing. Some may get aggressive, while others may become more withdrawn. Maintain close communication with these customers. Red. At this point, customers are obviously intoxicated. They are irrational, clumsy, and may represent a danger to themselves as well as others. If you have not already done so, stop serving immediately. Intervening during high-risk situations. Ideally, things will go smoothly at work so that you can concentrate on serving and satisfying your customers. Of course, while it is nice to hope for the best, you should always be prepared for the worst. If a high-risk situation does arise, it is important that you know how to respond effectively. Assess the situation. It is in your interest to assess all the different factors in a situation before rushing to conclusions. If a customer is being very friendly, try and remember how that stacks up to his or her usual nature. If some friends are getting excited over a football game, watch closely for any possible signs of aggression. It is important to decide if a potential problem exists and how you can properly address it before getting directly involved. Delegate responsibilities. After you have made sense of the situation, act quickly to delegate responsibilities. Consider what aspects of the problem an employer can address, like perhaps speaking with the customer directly. Also, keep in mind what you can do, like calling a taxi, friends, or the police. See if a coworker is able to help you by showing support and standing firm with your decisions. It is always in the establishment's interest to show a united front in the face of a problem or challenge. Take action. Once everyone has a clear understanding of what they have to do, the next step is obviously to follow through with action. If a fight emerges, don't get physically involved, but instead separate other customers and contact the authorities. If you have to stop service, do so firmly but in a polite manner. If a customer is suffering from potential alcohol poisoning or a drug overdose, or is otherwise involved in any serious incident, then immediately call 911. Follow-up 
After an incident is all settled, make sure to follow up. Notify your supervisor so that steps can be taken to prevent or better prepare for a repeat occurrence. Moreover, report whatever took place in your incident log, being as detailed as possible. Finally, maintain any documents related to the incident, such as sales slips or receipts, for future reference. Specific Challenges and Difficult Situations A. Arranging for Alternative Transportation Never let an intoxicated customer go out on the streets and drive. We have already covered in previous units the tremendous legal liability associated with drunk driving. Moreover, it goes without saying that on moral and ethical grounds, allowing a customer to drive under the influence is impermissible. If possible, encourage the customer to wait a while to sober up before driving off. Otherwise, try to arrange for alternative transportation. Sometimes, a friend or acquaintance of the customer may be available to drive. At other times, a taxi may be around to drive the customer. Some establishments even coordinate with taxi services before they begin to serve alcohol. There are serious repercussions for an establishment that does not train its employees to properly respond to an intoxicated customer who wants to drive. A few years ago, a bar in Washington, D.C. overserved a customer. After that customer left the bar, he began driving off and then caused a severe car crash. Although the establishment had entered into an agreement with an insurance company for defense and indemnification, the establishment ultimately forfeited its rights to defense. This was because, among other things, the establishment irresponsibly contributed to the customer's intoxication. The establishment also failed to arrange for alternative transportation once it became clear that the customer had been overserved. To top it all off, the establishment was criticized for negligent hiring, training, and supervision. B. Dealing with designated drivers It is quite common for a group of friends to designate a particular individual to drive them home after a night out drinking. In that scenario, the group itself will consume alcohol, often in large quantities, but the designated driver will remain clear-headed enough to drive safely. Generally, a designated driver is expected to abstain from alcohol completely. There are times, though, when a designated driver will order drinks, but just to a lesser extent than the rest of the group. When that happens, it becomes a little less clear how to act. Even in groups with designated drivers, you should always adopt a responsible approach when serving alcohol. Avoid over-serving. A customer who has had too much to drink can become obnoxious and aggressive. Thus, even when accompanied by a designated driver, intoxicated customers can still cause damage to themselves and others. Incentivize the designated driver not to drink. If you learn about individuals who should not be drinking, bring over to their table pitchers of water or complimentary snacks. Arrange for alternative transportation. If it appears that even a group's designated driver has had too much to drink, then you should work to ensure that no one in the group gets behind a wheel. C. Identify problem patrons. Some customers are going to cause you more of a headache than others. While you must deal with each customer on a case-by-case -case basis, it helps to have a sense of who you should be keeping an eye on. Troublemakers. Customers who were involved in past incidents. Bar hoppers. Individuals who enter your establishment with signs of drinking beforehand. Chronically drunk customers. Customers who conceal their intoxication levels so well that it becomes difficult to realize when to stop serving them. For these types of customers, it is especially important to count drinks. The flag system. Checking ID is the primary safeguard against serving to individuals under the legal drinking age of 21. One approach that may be taken at your establishment is the flag system. Flag stands for feel, look, ask, and give back. Let's take a look at what each individual letter represents. F. Feel. Always make sure that customers take IDs out of their wallet or purse for you to touch and examine. Carefully inspect the ID, feeling for any information that might have been altered or modified. Pay special attention to verifying that photo and birth date information were not altered. L. Look. Look for the state seal and hologram. Look at the photograph and compare it to the face of the person who is presenting the ID. Look at height and weight and again compare this information to the person presenting the ID. Look at the date of birth. Make sure to do the math to see if the ID is for a minor. While some states have special features designed on IDs for those under the age of 21, birth date info is still important to check. 
Compare the age on the ID with the person's apparent age. Look at the expiration date to see if the ID is still valid. In most states, an expired ID is not acceptable. A. Ask. Ask the customer questions. See if they know things like their middle name or their zodiac sign. Ask questions about the customer to his or her friend. Any hesitation in the response may merit suspicion. Ask for the person to sign their name and then compare their signature to the one on the ID. G. Give back. Give the ID back to the customer. If age appropriate, allow the person to purchase alcohol or to enter into your establishment. Give the ID back to the customer even if you suspect that it is fake, falsified, or borrowed. You may then proceed to deny the customer entrance or service. States will vary on their rules for how to handle fake IDs. Some states will permit you to confiscate them, while others only entrust that power to law enforcement. Returning fake IDs to customers is generally an acceptable practice, but you may want to check with your local liquor authorities. Legal Updates Lawmakers are constantly searching for new ways to generate revenue. In fact, some lawmakers are looking into easing restrictions on alcohol laws in order to promote more taxable liquor sales. Lifting bans on Sunday alcohol sales, allowing liquor tastings, extending permissible hours to sell drinks, all these are possible reforms that may be underway in cities and states across the nation. Whatever happens, it is important that you and your establishment be prepared. Indeed, with more freedom comes more responsibility. For example, while you may think that your establishment benefits from being allowed to serve at a later hour, don't forget that nighttime driving can be riskier for intoxicated customers than driving during the day. That, among other reasons, is why an establishment should stay clear from potential liability by having each and every employee get trained. Always remember, serve wise.